the hopes of detente, shuttle diplomacy, new treaties and trade agreements, conflicts remain common among the world's nations, and peace often seems but a respite between wars. We continue to hope, of course, to work at peace and conciliation, perhaps harder than we ever have before. But we work at being prepared, too. For as we have come to learn, strength is the best deterrent to war, and to be prepared the only measure of our determination. Thus, we maintain a vigilance so intense, we are literally watching the world from thousands of outposts on land sea with a carrier task force assuming a more critical role now as fewer foreign bases and fewer foreign ports remain open to us. Our overseas bases have become somewhat tenuous in many circumstances and many places in the world where we have seen governments change, we've seen treaties not be followed through with, and we have lost some overseas bases, very, very valuable assets in projecting our national interest uh, throughout the world. As we see this happening, it becomes very apparent that the carrier task force represents the only fallback, the only position that the United States has in order to be able to project our national power. When you're talking about an attack aircraft carrier, you're talking about a very heavy instrument of national policy, and it's got a variety of roles which it has to fulfill and which it is indeed capable of fulfilling. But it must be remembered that the primary mission of this carrier is to project United States foreign policy in an offensive role, should it be necessary, uh, in the 6th Fleet, the 7th Fleet, or wherever it's called upon to do so. Once that carrier is launched, once he leaves on a deployment, the carrier becomes an integral floating base that is instantly responsive and capable of a high-speed transit to anywhere in the world. To do the job required of the carrier today calls for a combination of different aircraft, different weapon systems within the air wing, a mix effective in a major war or a brush fire, capable of handling surface and subsurface threats and with aircraft aboard for anti-submarine warfare. It's a self-contained strike force, a marvel of efficiency and flexibility. Power and pursuit packaged in a thousand feet of rolling deck. For all its capabilities, however, the effectiveness of the carrier is dependent on a total team effort and an understanding among the squadrons that each crew member and each airplane has an integral part to play. A mutual support essential to getting the job done. And in the final analysis, putting bombs on the target is still the primary role of the attack carrier. There are three attack squadrons on this ship that are capable of doing just that carrying that offensive role to the enemy wherever it might be. And of the three, as I've said very clearly and unequivocally in my mind, the one that has the greatest capability, the most firepower, has the longest reach, is the A6 squadron on the carrier. We've considered some of the other airplanes which carry bombs and put them on target, which have the same type of mission the A-6 does in general. But the real crux of what the A-6 is about is the fact that the A-6 can do it any time. And with the A-6E, we can do it with a high degree of reliability. It can be a beautiful day, or it can be a foul night where the ceilings are down at 100 feet and the visibility is a half a mile. It doesn't make any difference. And that's why the A-6 is worth its salt. Since the German counteroffensive in the Battle of the Bulge during World War II, an enemy success in Korea and Vietnam, bad weather and darkness have been key elements in greatly reducing the advantages of U.S. air power, allowing the enemy to move freely while U.S. planes sat on carrier decks in remote airfields waiting for the weather to clear. With the advent of the A6E intruder, however, effective U.S. air power is available round the clock in any weather conditions. One of a kind in the defense inventory, it is the only aircraft capable of penetrating thick ground fog, heavy rains, or intense cloud cover to detect, 
identify and attack fixed or moving enemy targets. Electronically, the A6E is a new airplane with the latest radar, inertial navigation, and computer system, key elements in its all-weather tracking capability. But the first intruder, the A6A, flew early in the 1960s and made its mark in Vietnam. Since then, the airplane has gone through an extensive product development program so that today it is a most versatile weapon system, capable of leading other aircraft into target areas and handling close air support, interdiction, and deep strike missions, with a bomb load second only to the B-52. And with a new CV concept, the A6E is now being used as an ASW vehicle as well. For the carrier, where deck space is always a problem, the multi-mission capability of the A6E is a distinct advantage in helping to blend the overall functions of the carrier air wing to make the carrier more self-sufficient and the CV a more potent force than ever before for the war at sea, and in support of amphibious operations. In coordinated assaults with the Marines, Air Force, and Army, Navy ships help put landing forces on the beach, while joint tactical air power provides essential air defense, reconnaissance, and close support. During the first 48 hours or so, air support is the responsibility of Air Force and Navy aircraft as directed by the strike force, or in response to specific requests against specific targets. Once the beachhead is established, close air support is turned over to the Marines. Operating a shipboard-like environment on land, taking advantage of abandoned airfields when they exist, or setting up portable landing strips. Effective air support can be provided on a moment's notice, where it's needed, when it's needed. By keying a radar beacon on the ground with a computer system in the A6E, Close air support can be carried out with an accuracy in air-to-ground weapons that was previously unattainable with a non-radar significant target. To take full advantage of the system's capabilities, Marines have put pilots in the field as forward air controllers to direct beacon operations. Proceed inbound to the following grid, uh, Niner 36378. Advise whenever you copy uh, target brief, over. Roger, we're proceeding 9 3 6 3 7 8 and go ahead with your brief. Uh, Roger, slang uh, 1-7, uh, RAPFAC brief follows. Uh, One of the things that's impressed me most with the United States Marine Corps has been its air support, not so much the aircraft as their ability to get the aircraft onto the target. And the uh, forward air controllers know their business. Sally Ho, 1-7, looking good. And they uh, know the air side and they know the ground side, and therefore the coordination is extremely good. And the response from the aircraft is good because they're talking to people of their own type. You put a pilot on the ground uh, and you've got uh, air eyes on the ground directing the aircraft. The RABFAC itself is uh, kind of fantastic because it's pretty frustrating when you get out there. You've got the aircraft, you've got the uh, enemy situation developing, but you haven't got the weather uh, to get any kind of ordinance on the target. What this RABFAC will do for you, either at night when it's uh, essentially IFR condition or uh, in cloudy weather where you can't see the ground, you can load up a RABFAC and essentially it's just a transponder and he can set it up and with his radar in the, uh, in the A6, the Grumman A6, he can paint that beacon, uh, you can give him the important information and he can, from that beacon, get an offset uh, bombing point, uh, pick it up and uh, destroy the enemy without ever seeing them. We were getting uh, aircraft with ordnance on the target not more than 33 minutes after the FAC had the original mission. And that's going all the way through, up to the desk. The bird is coming over, making contact, being passed out to the forward air controller, running the strike, and the ordnance on the ground in 33 minutes. These guys will put them anywhere you want them. It's just a question of how close to you do you dare put it. The accuracy is just as accurate as the offset information is given to us. 
we've flown live beacon hop set of here on a hot pad with the E system and uh, our, our BDA is 90 over 100 and our hits are 10, 20 feet. We can get six bombs to go out on a practice target with the average aviator and the average BM in the squadron. The reliability and consistency of the system, we can almost guarantee a CEP of zero on straight path attacks. Almost right. guarantee that three of those bombs are going to be bullseye. There's no guarantee that in the E, tightest D system in the world, that uh, if you're wrapped up like that, dodging a SAM or, or, or AAA or something, when you're coming over a target, you're obviously in a real hot area, like over downtown or something like that, you're not going to be making more than one pass. So your CEP is going to be predicated in an actual combat environment by what actually is happening over the target. I mean, we don't bomb like old. Second World War, guns over Schlechtelhagen or whatever those B-29s did. You know? Yeah, most of our runs were single passes. Single uh, passes, drop. depending on where you were. In uh, Vietnam, uh, we found that our best deal was to run in as low as possible. And uh, someone told me when I got there that you'd be running in at 700 feet. And I said, well, you're nuts. I'm not going to be at 700 feet. And the next thing, I found myself pushing 300 feet. And literally just popping up at the last minute, just high enough to get out of the last back then. And that's what we did. And of course, with the SA-6, it's going to be a little bit different because no matter what altitude you at, the SAMs are going to be able to get you. So we might move it up higher. I don't know. We How don't know too much about the SA-6. Uh, we know we can defeat a MiG-17 by just not running the sun. We know that we can outmaneuver a 21 below 15,000 feet. No airplane is all things for all missions, of course. Performance varies with design parameters and the mission at hand. DC-3s outfitted with Gatling guns had their place in Vietnam. But there are better ways to do the job. And when one airplane, like the A-6, is called upon to do several different missions, somebody has to back off and say, I can do with less of this, but I've got to have more of that and be ready to pay for it. Anytime you talk performance in an aircraft, you're talking about compromises or trade-offs, depending on what you're looking for in the airplane. An attack airplane is designed for long-range, heavy payload, as opposed to a fighter aircraft, which has got to have a high-speed capability and, in most cases, a better turning radius. It's fairly easy to make one that goes fast. It's difficult to make one that goes very fast and carries a large external payload. The designers of the A6 made a compromise but by making that compromise, we are able to carry a large weapons load. We can carry 15,000 pounds of external stores, and we can carry it pretty well to the fringes of the envelope. The A6 is a very stable airplane, and as you learn in elementary aerodynamics, when you get that stability, you trade off some maneuverability. Yet the A6 is very maneuverable. You've got heavy stick forces. You feel like you might be driving a Mack truck as compared to some more maneuverable airplanes. But it will maneuver, and it'll put bombs on target in any condition. It maintains its energy. If you're doing 360 knots running in on a target for a pop-up attack, you can cob it and pull up, and you'll have 300 knots for the rolling. You'll have that airspeed. You've got a 10,000, deck to 10,000 foot pop-up capability with about a three, three to four mile stand -up easily and still have good rolling airspeed. I really don't think that there's there's anybody around that can take as much as we can, as far as we can, and stay as long as we can and put it on the target with the accuracy that the A6 can deliver the ordnance and get home with enough gas left to go to an alternate. Performance is only part of the story. The hottest airplane in the inventory isn't worth the hangar space it occupies if you can't rely on it consistently. And any time you're dealing with a sophisticated weapon system, you're faced with problems of availability and maintainability. Readiness is what it's all about. Pilots never want to miss a sortie, and maintenance personnel pride themselves on quick turnarounds to meet demanding flight schedules. With the system reliability of the A6E, aircraft can be turned around in 45 minutes and intruder squadrons are making more sortie commitments with total weapon system capability. A built-in test system helps the crew determine status of the various A6E weapon system components in a matter of minutes. A complete operational check can be accomplished in less than half an hour. Go, no go in under 15 minutes. The crew knows exactly what they have to work with before they take off. 
and the bombardier navigator is often able to troubleshoot in-flight malfunctions while in the air, providing a more meaningful debrief back on the deck. To package this kind of capability in one aircraft, and then to keep that aircraft an effective fighting machine over the years in the face of constantly changing technologies and new threats, takes a lot of airplane to start with, and a continuous program of product improvement. Even now, the A6E has improved means for acquiring and identifying targets, and for delivering weapons with greater accuracy than ever before, at night and in any weather conditions. A tram version of the intruder with a forward-looking infrared display, or FLIR, provides television-like pictures of targets that can't be seen by the unaided eye, nor sharply delineated by the sweeping now-you-see-it-now-you-don't image on a typical radar scope. Using temperature differences to generate the display, FLIR can help A6 crew members target an enemy tank, a ship's waterline or concealed cargo, and deliver smart, laser-guided weapons. Even non-radar significant road patterns and plowed fields can be clearly distinguished. The A6E is also being equipped to deliver the standoff Condor missile, a self-navigating television-guided system effective at long range against ship and land-based targets. The unmatched versatility of the A6E and its seemingly endless potential for assuming still greater capabilities is in keeping with the basic design considerations for the aircraft. A flexible weapon system, effective in a limited war or an all-out offensive. There's always been a lot of discussion, I think, about uh, the virtues of a very cheap air-to-ground tactical airplane as opposed to the much more expensive all-weather, all-purpose, multi-mission aircraft such as the A-6 is. I think we prove without question in Southeast Asia the value and the requirement for a more sophisticated, uh, more capable aircraft than what perhaps the cheapest version we can put on a carrier deck would provide. Uh, we proved it nightly from all the, the carriers in the 7th Fleet when A-6s were often the only tactical aircraft flying uh, over North Vietnam, and that includes the Air Force as well. The aircraft is uh, it's a super airplane. I'm less emotional about the airplane than some, I think. It, it, a machine is a machine, and that's, I don't ascribe a personality to it or anything like that. It's a, it's a machine, and if you understand the way it works, and it's going to break some sometimes, and it's, it's going to work well sometimes, if it's well designed, it'll work most of the time. The A6E is such a machine for the all-weather mission. It can do anything. Daylight VFR to the most worst night in the world. You can still go out and hit a target. If there's anything we've got to keep in mind with the A6E is the fact that we have an untapped resource here. We've got to eliminate the tunnel vision, especially in marine close air employment. We've got to eliminate tunnel vision and allow the development of new tactics because the A6E has a reliability that was virtually undreamed of two years ago, and a versatility. We haven't found anywhere near all the possible uses for it. And there's no doubt in my mind, regardless of the hostility that we were involved in, or whatever type of war it was, if it was within striking distance of the carrier, the A6 would be carrying the war to the front at night and in all weather conditions.